This is the uh, next in the series of the land navigation uh, videos. This will cover how to navigate with only a compass. I probably said this in the other videos, but uh, you need to invest your money in a good quality compass. Don't trust your life to a, a $5 button compass. The other three things you're going to need is a pad, a paper, a pen or pencil. Pencil's better. I'm going to use a pen on this so you guys can see what I'm doing. And you're going to need a, a timepiece of some sort. I'm going to use a cell phone because I don't carry a watch anymore. First thing I do whenever I come to a place that I don't have a map, usually I always try to have a map, but uh, sometimes it's just not possible. So the first thing I do is I look for a uh, boundary feature, I guess is what I would call it. Something like um, the base of a hill, um, the valley line that runs at the base of a hill. Something you can walk against and keep it on one side of you uh, to use it as a, as a marker. Uh, also creeks and streams, rivers, things like that. I've got a creek here to my right that I'm going to use as my uh, um, fixed point. This will be somewhat like uh, using a trail. Um, you'll always have something to move off of, a known point that you can navigate away from and navigate back to. Uh, pace count here is not something I use. I instead use the uh, time method. That's the reason for the time piece. Um, instead of counting your your paces as you walk, and you can you can definitely use a, a pace count if, if you'd rather use that than the time, but I prefer the time myself, the time method. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use my uh, pen and paper and my compass and I'm going to make my own map. The idea with the time piece is you want to keep a steady pace while walking. Something that's comfortable, something you can maintain uh, both outbound and inbound. That way on your return trip you're going to be able to use that time to judge uh, your distance traveled and uh, where you are on your map. First thing I've done with my map is I put a northerly arrow and then down here I put an X where my position is. The next step is to orient your map in the same manner that you would your topographic map. So now my map, my compass are both pointing north. The next thing I've done is I've drawn the recognizable uh, boundary line which is the creek to my right which would be we now know as east east of my position and on the west of my position quite a distance away from me I'm gonna judge it to be about I'm gonna judge it to be about 300 yards to my west is uh, a very recognizable uh, hill but I'll update this map as I go before you head out the first thing you want to do is check your time my time right now is 3.03 p.m. write that on your paper at your starting point then you want to stow your compass away, keep it away from any metallic objects, and start walking. And I'm going to use the creek as my boundary line. But keep in mind, uh, you always want to have an eye on that creek. You don't want to lose it. There's a good reason to always keep your eye on the boundary line that you chose. Reason being, this is the creek line, or your boundary line that you chose. Over here is your path. You're walking. You get off a little bit. You, cannot, you can no longer see the creek from where you are. You walk even farther up and you decide to come back over to the creek. As you do that, you walk back towards the direction of the creek. And all of a sudden, whenever you think the creek should be there, it isn't. Because the creek, you didn't realize that you hadn't been this far, the creek bends to the right and moves this way. So now all of a sudden, you're here and you get a little bit panicky because you, the creek's supposed to be here and it's not. So always keep an eye on your boundary line. Every now and then, uh, take a second to stop look at your surroundings and uh, it's very important to go ahead and look at your back trail. Alright here's the back trail. Um, the reason you want to do this is because things look differently coming back the other direction. So every once in a while take a look back behind you, scan the terrain just real quick and uh, note any uh, features that stand out. If you come across, say, something that's very unusual, uh, something that you just uh, noticed right off the bat, go ahead and mark that down on your map. The main thing with any kind of navigation, whether you're doing it with a map and compass or just a compass or just a map, is to pay attention. Anything that will distract you from uh, your, your wayfinding, save all of that until you get to a happy spot. Somewhere where you're going to camp, some kind of a central station to where you can branch off of, like uh, spokes on a wheel. A couple things will dictate when you stop. One is going to be rest. The other thing is going to be when terrain features change enough to go ahead and update your map. That's what I've done here. I laid the map out, I oriented it to uh, north, and I noted 
uh, that the hill on my west side is starting to wrap around to the east. Also noted here, uh, it's, I know it's impossible for you to read because of my handwriting, but this says cedar log. And right here is a sort of unusual cedar log that I'm sure I'll recognize on the way back. Whenever I walk away from this, I'm going to turn around and look backwards and take a look and see how it, it, see it will look on my return trip. And I noted the time that it took me to get from the point, starting point, to the cedar log, 317. Now if you'll notice here, I accidentally uh, put the cedar log on the other side of the creek. Correct those mistakes as quickly as possible. Uh, don't just think that you'll remember, because you won't. I scratched it out, put it on the correct side of the creek. Okay, uh, one thing I didn't notice, because I wasn't being observant, uh, I noticed it but I didn't put it on my map, is that there's a, a hill running along this creek to my east. So I took the time to immediately correct the mistake that I made, and I uh, went ahead and drew the hill in on my map. Okay, so I've made it to a point where I want to stop and I want to uh, deviate from my boundary line. So I've come to a point here where I've stopped and uh, there's a recognizable marking here that I can use as my uh, leave point. And it's just an old tire jammed up here in the creek. Also, from the uh, deviation point, you want to look around, see if there's anything all, uh, recognizable that's close by. There's a, a down tree and it's horizontal. Anything horizontal usually sticks out in the woods pretty easily. It's just um, sort of unnatural looking. You can also, if you want to take the time and uh, you, you really want to be sure about your uh, leave point, you can go ahead and erect a tripod. Stand it up or uh, just uh, stack a bunch of uh, limbs around a tree in a teepee form. That'll give you a, a landmark to come back to to recognize whenever you're navigating back. So at my leave point, I've oriented my map. I have noted on the map jam up which is these logs right here and old tire on the time that I approximate time that I left my boundary line 331 the next thing to do is to shoot an azimuth in the direction you intend to travel okay I shot my azimuth and uh, I'm using a, a British compass that a, a friend gave me and uh, so it's it's in mills but uh, it's the same process if you use uh, degrees okay so my azimuth is 44 mills in an easterly direction northeasterly I took the time to draw my line at uh, 44 mils and then below it or on uh, I wrote 44 mils and then below that I wrote my return azimuth which would be 12 mils so now it's time to head out in the azimuth that you shot in that direction alright here's another handy use for the axe uh, marking blazes along your trail alright I've taken my axe and just skinned the bark off this tree and uh, this is a blaze mark this is a mark I make on the, the facing side of the tree as I'm uh, heading towards my destination. On the opposite side of the tree, I make a higher blaze on the tree up higher. That way whenever I come back or if I hit this trail from another direction, I'll know which way it is back to camp or back to where uh, my leave off site was from my boundary line. As with all things in navigation, never rely on your memory. Uh, if you can write it down, then definitely do it. I've taken the time here to note my blaze marks on the back side of my map. It says blaze, home side low, return side high. That way if I come back onto this trail and I see a blaze and I, man, I can't remember which side is high and which side is low, I've got it written on my map. As you walk along, you want to blaze a, a tree as needed. In other words, um, you know, I can't say 20 feet, I can't say 100 yards because it depends on the terrain you're in. All the time you're doing that, you want to maintain your compass heading. Okay, I've gotten to my uh, destination point where I wanted to mess around, see what was there. I reached it. I noted the time that I reached it. Uh, I reached my desti destination point at 3.53. I marked a couple of blazes, and uh, now I'm going to head back to my leave point off of my boundary line, which is right here. Now, remember I said my return azimuth is going to be 12 mils. I'm going to do the intentional offshoot on this, and I'll show you why. Okay, I've taken into account the fact that I don't know where this creek goes from here. This creek might turn this way, or it could turn this way, I have no idea. So remember back where I showed you uh, why you want to keep your eye on the, the boundary line. Same principle here. I don't know what's up there, so I do know what's back this way because I've marked it on my map. I've traveled that direction already. So instead of trying to hit this uh, point at 12 mils, if I bury any this way, then I could be lost. So. To compensate for that, I want to intentionally offshoot at 8 mils, which drops me to the south, which will hit on a line that I have already traveled. So now I'm going to head out 
at an eight mil heading and uh, see if I can hit my spot. Okay, the reason for my times comes into play here now. I left my boundary line at 331. I got here at 353. That means it took me, hang on, I gotta do some math. <laughs> Okay, I apologize for that. I got interrupted by some bow hunters, so I'm not gonna be able to show you uh, my return trip from here to here. Hopefully I can explain it a little bit. Uh, the time difference from the, the leave off point to where I stopped over here is uh, 22 minutes. So that means I had to go in a direction of eight mils for 22 minutes, the same pace that I walked in on, which I did. I came across the creek. Once I hit the creek, I knew to turn south. There's my cedar log. That might look familiar. Remember I took a look at my back trail and that was in the picture, I think. But anyway, I saw it. So I know I'm on the right course. Okay, once you get to your destination, you're home free, of course, and done deal. So I hope uh, this has given you some ideas or some instruction on uh, using just a compass and a piece of paper and pencil to get where you're going and uh, enjoy getting off trail. I'm sure I've forgotten some things. Um, if you have any questions, just ask. Uh, I'm no expert, but maybe I can help you out in uh, in some way. Thanks for watching.